Uh, Kia ora no tātou, mi tō tahi, i te mana whenua torohi nei, tēnā ai tūriri, tēnā koutou, uh, huri noa, i nā mana huri o nā haui whā, ko tō mai nei, tēnā hui, tēnā iata, uh, tēnā rā koutou katoa. So kia ora everyone, my name is Takare Norton, and like Mara, I'd like to send a warm welcome to everyone who's came to Christchurch over the last couple of days. I'm really glad we put on some beautiful warm spring weather for you, and um, I hope you've enjoyed the hospitality. Um, so I work for the Naito Archive team, uh, based here in Ōtotahi Christchurch, and our job is to build a physical and digital repository of tribal knowledge. That includes our traditional place names, Māori reserves, publications, photographs, Waitangi Tribunal evidence, waiata, manuscripts, uh, everything and anything uh, about Ngaitahu. And what I want to do today is show you um, how our mapping work uh, has evolved over time and how we've been able to integrate it into this wider Ngaitahu archive search engine, which is primarily for our own people first and foremost, but secondly, it is a place that anyone in the world can access information about us. We want to tell our stories to the world, and essentially that's my talk this morning. Uh, up here, I've got three images. Uh, these are the three key projects of the Ngaitahu archive team. The large image here, this is Tangata Ngaitahu. This is our work uh, on producing publications of Ngaitahu biographies. Two volumes, uh, 50 biographies a volume, and only $40 at Wickles. Um, <laughs> you'll see Kahuru Manu. This is our cultural mapping project. This is our Ngaitahu digital atlas, and I'll talk about that at the start. And then you'll see Kariao. That is our online archive search engine. And, that, and that's how we bring everything together. So although these are three separate projects, they all sort of integrate into one another. And so essentially the first part of my talk this morning is our journey on our cultural mapping project, Kahuru Manu, and the second part will be about Kareo, our archive search engine. And um, yeah, I'm not a technician at all, I'm not a GIS expert, I'm probably the most incompetent person here when it comes to GIS, but essentially this talk is how a community is working together to tell our story, to ensure our stories are recorded for future generations, and like I said, all New Zealanders. Okay. So I'm going to start talking about our cultural mapping project, and this is um, a photograph of us, and I, I look at me then, I think I'm probably way less stressed than I am <laughs> today, but this was taken about 15 years ago, and essentially we started mapping our values in the South Island High Country, really because I got myself into trouble with some farmers, and so this group of tribal elders came around me and said, let's map our history in the High Country. And this person uh, next to me is Trevor Happy House. He was the archivist for Ngaitahu in the 1980s, an amazing man. And he was one of our leading people who negotiated the Ngaitahu settlement. Anyway, over time, Trevor had gathered this amazing little collection of histories and traditions. So along with Trevor and three or four other Komatua, we'd come together in our main head office at Ngaitahu. And they would bring together, they would bring along their collections, and we would have these one to 50,000 topographic maps laid out, you know, and they'll tell me a place name, and I'll have my little label machine, I'll type out the name on the label machine, I'll take it off, I'll put it on the map, I'll put a green dot next to the sticker, I've realised I spelled the name wrong, back to my label machine, retype it again, put it back in, grab my laptop, write everything in the spreadsheet, um, and then after the hui, we would put it into our mapping system. You know, and for me, it was just like a stressful occasion trying to do everything, and they'll just sit there, have cups of tea and coffee, eat chocolate biscuits, and just direct me which place names to map. And we did that for a couple of years, and it was really great in a sense that they just loved it. They loved sharing their knowledge into the system. Um, and a real turning point for us was when a person called Ian Gover uh, came to work for us. And we actually stole them from the Department of Conservation, and it's probably one of the best things I've ever done in my career at NITO, because Ian completely revolutionised how we were mapping, because he realised at this current rate of mapping 20 place names a day, it would take us a thousand years to finish mapping the high country. And so what Ian did is that he created a place names, a NITO who place names database with their own structure um, that was connected into our mapping platform, and that allowed us to map life at this mapping hui. So our people would come along, and they'd tell us their information, they'd bring all their papers and manuscripts, and we would be able to record it right there. And we'd go to all of our marais and have these amazing hui for you know, two or three days at a time. And we would have our laptop set up, and they'll be connected to the data projector, and there's a big screen, 
and the people would go up to the big screen, you know, they're like, no, no, move it to the left, move it to the left, no, no, move it to the other left, to the other left, and you'd be there just mapping, but they just loved it. They absolutely loved it. And these sort of became, like, really important local events. So people would start bringing their children, because they're mainly sort of elderly folks, right? So they'd bring their children, their grandchildren. You know, we're getting fed, like, crayfish and powers and seafood, you know. They just became these really... Uh, wonderful times where we had all this momentum and they loved doing what they were doing. And um, we also did all these amazing field trips. So not only were we mapping our sites, we wanted to go out and see them as well. And, that, and um, I remember one particular occasion in Fiordlin, there's about 50 of us from the Marae in Southland, and we were recording mapping these sites up there. And we're on a bus. And um, I remember it was lunchtime and they brought out 10 ham rolls. And I was thinking... That's not enough to feed us. That's a bit weird. But then they brought out like these three massive buckets of oysters, you know, and that was our lunch. But the point I want to say is that, you know, when they're looking after you and loving you, that's when you know you've really got a co-papa that they really believe in. So we did that for probably seven, eight years, I guess. So over that time, we were able to manage to map about 6,000 traditional Māori place names in the South Island. So every green... So every green diamond you see up there is one place name. And these are place names for um, villages, food gathering sites, lakes, rivers, wetlands, mountains, mountain ranges, everything. And behind one place name is a huge amount of data. There are the Māori name or names. If there's an English name, we record that, obviously the location, uh, all the narrative behind that place name. It could be a sentence, it could be a hundred words. But the key thing was, every name gets referenced. Every name gets referenced, and ideally we identify the Naito informant who gave that place name, because when, our public, when publications are coming out in the 40s and 50s, they're saying, this old Māori man from Bluff said this, but we want to know who is that old Māori man. And I do want to say that this isn't the end product. This program will go on and on, but we've got an amazing foundation to work from. So there's all this data just behind one place name. We also mapped the traditional travel routes throughout Tuaiponamu. So you can see the green lines there, they're the, they're the travel routes. Essentially, the uh, east coast, that's State Highway 1, north and south. Every river, every river is a trail into the high country. The Hurunui, the Waimakariri, the Rakaia, the Rangitata, the Ashburton, the Waitaki, the Klutha, Every river is a trail. Some rivers get used more than others, but every river is a trail. Uh, and this is quite a sad map. This shows the original Māori reserves allocated to our people when the Crown purchased um, the Naito part of Tuaipainamu uh, in the 1840s, 50s and 60s. They're just so small, <laughs> tiny red dots you can see. Because you've got to remember, when our people entered these agreements, one-tenth of the land was supposed to be reserved. So that's sort of quite a sobering uh, map, to be honest. So after all that work, our people decided they wanted a digital atlas. So in 2017, we launched Kahuta Manu, which is a public website um, that, is now, that is available to use. Uh, this is one of the landing homepages. What I want to point out is this. That mountain there, so this, this is Lake Oho, up in the Mackenzie Basin. That mountain is called Ben Oho, um, but the Māori name for that is Tūrua Tanifa, and I'll come back to that later on. And if you're, uh, um, you know, if you know the Mackenzie Basin, there's Lake Tūrua Tanifa. Well, that lake is, the, is named after that mountain. But that's a really important mountain um, in Tuaipainamu. So this is our digital atlas. Out of those six and a half thousand place names, uh, 1,500 names are on the atlas, uh, and so uh, all the travel routes uh, and all the Māori reserves. Um, and essentially, you can. Um, see the search bar up there, you can type in the Māori name, English name, or the address, and it'll take you right there. So um, I've searched the Pai Convention Centre, you can see the large building in there, and I've clicked on the Avon River, uh, which is the Otakaro. We the traditional Māori name is Otakaro, and you'll see in the sidebar, uh, that's the narrative for that river, and the key part is, all those references beneath that, 
That's what makes Kahurumana really special, the references behind the place names. And that mountain you've seen before, uh, this is Toroa Tanifa here. So you can see the name uh, by the lake, and again, you can see the narrative, but look at all those uh, references as well. In that. So there's so much depth behind one place name. Okay, I now want to move on to Kareao, our search engine, and I want you to see how we've been able to integrate our mapping program into this. So Kareao is the public website of the Naito Archive. Again, it's publicly available, anyone can use it. Um, and essentially, there are about 8,000 items now available. That includes photographs, annual reports, um, artworks in Taonga, oral histories, videos, just a variety of information. And essentially, it's the search bar, you type in your term there. So I've typed in Toro Tanifa, and you can see there are four items that come up. Okay? The first item, uh, that's a map that we'll look at shortly. The second item, um, they are some notebooks, we'll look at shortly as well. The third item uh, is that image you've seen, and the fourth item, uh, that's actually the name of another place, uh, Justin Kaipoi, called Toro Tanifa, but a total different location. So when you click on a record, this is what comes up. Um, and you'll see these blue hyperlinks. That takes you to another part of the website, or it'll take you to other websites. And so we've called this website Kareao, because Kareao is the supple jack, it's that sort of long vine that grows throughout the forest, right? And there are all these branches and offshoots you can take off. And so we've got it cut out for that reason. So when you come to a record, these blue hyperlinks are like offshoots you can go to to find more and more information. And, you know, when, you, when people think of sort of uh, museums and that sort of stuff, you know, you're sort of thinking, you know, a safe repository to keep your knowledge safe. But for us, it's actually about we want to connect our knowledge with knowledge held about us externally. We want to connect what we have to what's out there because the Crown holds a significant amount of our knowledge. So we won't be able to connect to them and tell our stories. So you'll see in the red sort of square box there, Rauri Tamari, uh, he's the man who drew that map. Uh, you'll see here Kororo Anō, which means more information. So if I was to click on that, um, a little biography comes up about him. And he, his biography is in Tangata Naitahu, uh, Volume 1 for $40 at work girls. <laughs> and this is the map, okay? Um, and you can see there the name Rua Tanifa, and you can see Ben Oho next to it. This map is amazing. It was put together in 1898. So Rauri Tamari was about 100 years old at this time. He was living at Waiha, which is just near Waimati, um, which got mentioned before. And a surveyor called Thomas Broderick travelled down there and met him. And Broderick records that he goes into his house because Broderick wants to record Māori place names in South Canterbury. And he records that Māori is laying on a mattress in the lounge and he's very ill. And when he turns up, Māori doesn't really want to talk to him, which is not an uncommon feature <laughs> amongst our people. We meet them for the first time. I know firsthand. So when I went to Arofenua, the words were, you're a nice kid, you can save lunch, and after that, you can F off back to Christchurch. <laughs> that was the first time I went to Imurai and Tamuka. It was quite remarkable, actually, but anyway. And that actually was for the mapping project as well. Wow. <laughs> but anyway, I massively digress. Um, what I want to say here is that Tamari fight starts warming up. And he's only speaking in Te Reo, and um, his grandson, Hinari, his son Hinari is translating, and the granddaughter starts writing down all these names that Tamari is telling him. And Broderick then picks up these names and creates this map. And what Broderick says in his correspondence, he said, Tamari's descriptions of place names were so detailed, I knew exactly where he was talking about. So this is one of the references we've used for Toroa Tanifa as a name for Ben Oho, the mountain. This is uh, another record on Kariao, the second record on Kariao about Toroa Tanifa. These are these amazing notebooks that were produced in 1915. They were produced by this man here. His name is Tiki Puku Rako, and he is... Um, Born 1840s, sort of dies 1920s, has no children, lives sort of in that Waitaki region his entire life, lives at Glenavy. and But Pukurako is famous for food gathering. So every year he'd go up to the Mackenzie Basin, Lakes Oho, Pukaki, Takapo, 
and he would gather huge amounts of wicker and eel. And what he would do is that he would make these mokahi, which are sort of rafts made out of bulrush and they would and those sorts of things. And he would stack all of these foods, these eels and wicker, on the back of his mokahi, and he would travel down the Waitaki River down to his home at Glenavy and store these foods um, over sort of the upcoming winter months. And he did this year after year. And over that time, he just gathered this um, crazy amount of knowledge of that landscape and a really incredible knowledge of the place names of that region. Well, anyway, in 1915, a Pākehā historian called Harry Speedy goes to Glenavy to record Lakamadi place names, and he bumps into this man. And Pukarako makes it very clear. He said, don't bother talking about anyone else. Talk to me, because I'm the man. I know these place names inside out. And they have a bit of a, I don't know if they have a bit of an argument, but anyway, they go away. But the very next day, Pukarako returns and hands him over these two amazing notebooks of place names for the Waitaki River. One notebook is for the northern bank, and I think this notebook is for the names on the south side of the river. But you can see in red there the name Turua Tanifa Ben Oho. So these are sort of two of the references we have um, for that name. Now back to this record, if you see down here, Ingwa Wahi, that means Māori place names. So all the Māori place names in Kahurumanu we've picked up, and we've made it a data set in Kareo. When you click on View on Kahurumanu, so you don't know where Toro Tanifa is, you click on View on Kahurumanu, it takes you directly there. And in that red box, there are those references for that map and with those notebooks. So you can just see the wealth of material that we have here, but the ability to connect. And next year, what we're we'll working on is the ability to click on a reference, and it will take you to that reference uh, in Kareo. That's Sean Bragg's and Ben's job for next year. Not that they know it yet, but I'm sure they'll be all over it. Um, now, the point I want to make here is this. You can see the amount of um, referencing and authenticity we have of this project. In 2019, the New Zealand Geographic Board um, made a decision to accept Kahurumanu as an authoritative publication on place names. That is an incredibly special status, and we're probably the only Indigenous people to have that status. What that means is that all of the place names on Kahurumanu will go into the New Zealand Gazetteer. Okay? Um, and say here for Turua Tanifa, that name goes into the Gazetteer and it sits by Ben Oho. Doesn't replace it, just sits there in there. But if we have a Māori place name for, a, for an area, and there is no Pākehā name for that place, or no other Māori name, that name can be fast-tracked to an official status. And I want to use this as an example. This is a Naito Visitor Centre at the outlet of Lake Pukaki. It opened a couple of years ago. Um, Red and Energy were fantastic. They sort of paid for it all and did all the work with us. Uh, this is us at the opening of it. And in the Visitor Centre, um, there's this great interpretation of our stories in that area. So it talks about the map drawn by Rāori Tamari, talks about the notebooks in Pukarako, Mokahi, food gathering, eels and tuna, it's all in there. But our people decided to name the visitor centre Puna Tahu, because that is the name of the old food gathering settlement located at the outlet of Lake Pukaki. They wanted to restore the name, they wanted to bring the name back to life. Because there is no equivalent name for that area, that name it's now an official place name in the New Zealand Gazetteer. And if, you, if I was to go into the Gazetteer, if I see history, origin and meaning, I click on that link and it takes me back to Kahurumanu. So we become the authority for our place names. This is really important because for so long people have told us who we are. They've told us our stories, but we want to be the storytellers. We want to tell our own stories to the world, and these platforms are allowing us to do that. Um, this is a really cool photo. This is in the Waitaki region as well. Um, the local Marae do a huge amount of monitoring work in the Waitaki area because it's such an important food gathering zone for us. Um, so they have all these monitoring sites that they use their software that ends it up. They record all the data, goes back in the GIS space, and that will come into uh, the archive eventually. This is, I think it's David and that's Dion, um, but they do a project where 
they go up to the Upper Waitaki, the Mackenzie Basin, all through there, and they sort of find these large sort of female um, tuna, um, and then they transport them down um, to basically to the lower part of the river. So these large female eels can migrate back out to the Pacific Ocean, um, release their eggs, and they'll make their way back, because these eels just cannot get back down um, through the dams that are now through there. And so as part of the monitoring program, um, they record all this data um, about each place. And what's really cool for me is that when they started, they used to have site one, site two, site three, site four, site five, site six. Now, what they're using are the traditional modern place names we've been gathering. So you won't see site A, site B, or site C anymore. They are using um, these place names here. And so it's another way of getting our names being used uh, in Treasured. I'm pretty sure that's my last slide. Um, I'll wrap things up, but basically what I want to say is that we, like, we love what we do, and we really believe in what we do, and we know schools love our work because they've got these mandated, authentic repositories of tribal knowledge. And when we produce resources, schools grab onto them. Our books, Tangata Naito, we've sold 7,000 books um, in the last sort of like five years. You know, it's incredible. But what's important for me is that our people love it. Our job is to work for our people, make them happy. And if they didn't trust us or trust these platforms, they wouldn't put their knowledge into it. But not only do our people benefit it from keeping their knowledge um, protected and there for future generations, all of these resources are publicly available. So anyone can access this stuff. But like I said, if our people didn't trust us or the platforms, this stuff wouldn't happen. So uh, kia ora Natato, thank you for your time this morning. I hope you sort of enjoy that talk and gives you sort of an insight into the work of the archive team and just want to acknowledge um, that there's a whole lot of people I don't know here who sort of help us out behind the scenes in a whole lot of variety of ways. And I just want to extend a warm welcome and thank you um, for your help in sort of building, um, being part of this building of this sort of digital archive search engine, which our tribe absolutely loves. So kia ora uh, thank you very much. Cheers.